Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and on today's genealogy tutorial, I will be discussing the Sal Kaplan Foundation website. The Sal Kaplan Foundation is a 501c3 which was founded in 2016 by Michael Levin, Joseph Menneker, and Leonid Vane. All three founders of the foundation are actually relatives, and the foundation is named after their common ancestor, Sal Kaplan. Now the website is actually a collaborative website with the goal of creating a collective repository of information about Jewish history. The website has a whole bunch of different sections and different pages within those sections, and a lot of those pages are actually run by different people. In fact, there's a page for myself that I have on the Sal Kaplan Foundation, which you can go to and see all sorts of stuff dealing with what I'm doing in Jewish genealogy. So this website is a real hidden gem when it comes to Jewish genealogy and learning about Jewish history as a whole, especially when dealing with the atrocities that happened in Eastern Europe. The website is a little bit difficult to figure out right off the bat, so we're going to dive into the website and I'm going to show you how to go through the website to find all of the different things that are in it. So starting out, here we have the home page for the Sal Kaplan Foundation website. And the first thing that I like to do is go to the website news to see what's the newest updates on the website. And once it pops up, you'll see that it's listed in chronological order going back, and you'll see that it goes back to 2017. You'll see that they have archived news from TKF, which stands for the Sal Kaplan Foundation, or you can click the From Everywhere, and you'll find Archive of Articles. And when you click that, that takes you to this page, which gives you an archive of all sorts of articles that have been uploaded. And when you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see these previous articles, and you can look at them based on the country. So Estonia, Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Moldova, other... So you can see there's a lot of stuff that you can check out. And these are just different articles from all over the place. So going back to the home page, now we're going to talk about how to actually go through the rest of the website. And there's two ways that you can actually do that. There is the main menu, which you can find up to the top. Or you can go down to the bottom and choose site map. And when you look at site map, it's going to break things out by the different site information. Whereas all of this information you will still be able to find going through the main menu, but the main menu breaks it down by topics. So you'll find the same things, but they may be listed a little bit differently if you go to site map versus these topics. But just clicking through, you'll be able to see all sorts of different stuff. All of the translated documents, names, scan documents, archive inventories, families, cemeteries, etc. All of which you will also be able to find through these. And it's actually going to be through these topics that we're going to look at the website today. Uh, this part, the site map, is fairly straightforward. All you really have to do is just click through and you'll find all the different things that may pertain to what you're looking for. So back to the front page, before we get into the nitty gritty of the website, I do want to point out a few other things. Uh, down at the bottom, there is a donate button. So if you do want to support this website and the things that it's doing, you can donate to them. You can also check out the community news or find out about the different partners or projects and more about the actual website and the people running it um, by going through these. And you can also contact them directly. So if you have information that you think would be perfect to fit onto the website, they're always looking for people to add great stuff. But now going to the top, we're going to look at shtetls. Now, in speaking with one of the founders of the website, he told me that when it comes to the shtetls and archives, they really act as a supplement to Jewish gen. So if you already use Jewish gen, then going to this website is going to give you a lot of different information that you may not have found on Jewish gen, but it's going to directly help with things that you may find on Jewish gen as well. So when you get to the shtetls page, it's broken down into two different sections, which are then broken down into further sections. We have the shtetls area, and we have the additional sources. 
For the shtetls, it's very straightforward. Uh, in the about shtetl, it just gives you a little information about what a shtetl is and the kind of life structure within a shtetl. And there's a YouTube video you can watch. And then you can go into the different tabs for the different areas to look at what is available in Belarus, Moldova, Ukraine, as well as the cemeteries that are being cataloged from shtetls and different research relating to shtetls. So anything that may be found here may be helpful to you if your family comes from a shtetl in, let's say, near Kiev or Volynia. But one great thing I really want to point out in this section is going under the Ukraine tab, and you'll also find it under Moldova, and I believe Belarus, is the interactive map by district. And you'll see a little example of that up here. Um, but you can do the interactive maps by district. And so there's all these different districts that you can look at. And so we're just going to look at Zatomer as an example. So it's going to take just a little second and then it's going to pop up and we have this map and you'll see all these different little numbers. And then if we scroll down, we'll see the different names of the areas and their locations. So what we can do is let's say this little three right here. Well, we can click that and you're going to see this little pop up. And when you click that, it's going to pop up the three different things. And these three are resources that are directly related to this town, uh, which is in Zatomer. And so we have the Routes to Roots Foundation website, which is by Miriam Wiener. There's a Wikipedia page about it. And then there's also a Jewish Gen page about it. Uh, but let's say that you choose the wrong one. We'll then just go down here and click reset zoom and it's going to zoom back out. And so let's say, okay, here on Zatomer, there's five. So we're going to click the icon and it pops up five different things. So there's a TKF Sal Kaplan Foundation website uh, page. We have a Jewish Gen page, a Wikipedia page, the Routes to Roots page. And then we also have another Sal Kaplan Foundation website page, which is the names uh, section. So one's in cemetery and one's in name. So lots of information about Zatomer. But this is really cool because let's say you're not very good with spelling the names or you kind of have a general idea of the areas around uh, where your family may be from, because sometimes you may not get the actual area. You may not get the town. You may just get a generalized thing. So if you just get Zatomer, well, looking at all of this may be very helpful in learning what resources are out there. So going back... We're going to go down to additional resources, and this one is a little bit less straightforward because a lot of times with the gray, it makes it look like it's a link, but when you click it, it's actually a drop-down box, and you'll see there's tons of links, and a lot of these will often be Kahila links. Some of them may be other types of links, but you'll see a lot of stuff in here that relates directly to Jewish Gen. Uh, there are also two books that are listed, which may be helpful to learn about certain areas. And then there's also links to different archive information. So Routes to Roots Foundation, that's the Miriam, that's the Miriam Wiener website. Uh, you have the JDC archive, Russian Empire genealogy resources, and so on. So there's a lot of stuff that you can find. And just by clicking through and figuring out what there is and seeing what's available, you may find stuff that you didn't even realize was there. And it might not be something you can find so easily through just a Google search or an ancestry search or a Jewish gen search. So next, just going up to families, we're going to take a quick look here. And this is straightforward again. Heritage just kind of talks about the basic heritage of Jewish family. And there's uh, this nice little uh, thing from Samuel Bach's uh, memoirs, Painted in Words, where he talks about basically living in a shtetl. Um, but you can go in and you'll see that there's the Jewish genealogy surname project. Uh, there's video stories, different things. Um, whenever you see these gray boxes, be sure to click them because they are going to be uh, drop downs that give you more information. So you can get excerpts from Alexander Biter's names and naming, which is very useful. Um, and just click through all sorts of stuff under genealogy. You'll actually notice we have the TKF collection of surnames from scanned documents, cemeteries, and books. Those are actual lists of names. 
uh, from different documents or cemeteries and books. So if you want to see if your family name may be found in a certain cemetery or a book or anything, you can go there and look through the lists. There's also my page about videos on Jewish genealogy, uh, Maria's tips and tricks to the Jewish gen research. And then there's also the link to finding a professional genealogist, which is the Jewish gen list of professional genealogists. And then here we have the other sources, which there's a lot. And a lot of these sources are, as I said previously, Jewish gen related. Not everything is. So you'll see stuff like the Lipase database, which is something I covered previously, also called the JewUA.org website. And that's run by Nadia Lipase and Alexi Lipes, both of whom I actually got to meet at IAJGS this year, uh, just a little side note. But there are a lot of links in here that may be helpful for you um, that you may not have known otherwise. Uh, you also have family stories, which you'll also find these family stories under recollections, which we're going to go to next. And then there's also migrations, which it discusses what this is going to be, but this is coming soon. The website is constantly being updated, and remember that this is being run by all sorts of people. This isn't just the three founders who run this. Every single page can be run by a different person. So it's kind of similar to Kahila Links with Jewish Gen because every single Kahila Links website is run by a different person. So now going under recollections, recollections are really just kind of stories in different formats. So there are documentaries, which for this, you want to click learn more, and it's going to pull up a full page about all these different documentaries. Uh, the Road to Krasnostov, this is actually a really great documentary, and this deals directly with actually the family history for the founders of this website and descendants of Sal Kaplan who suffered through the Holocaust. So this is a great documentary to not only learn about another piece of history of the Holocaust, but it's also a great place to learn about the history of the folks who run this website, and it can give you a really good view into the basis of what they're trying to do here. Um, as well, there are a lot of other great documentaries you can watch. Just click through and you'll find the different links to just watch the films. Uh, there's hours upon hours of information that you can get from these. And if you have some off time and you're just looking to learn a little bit more, it's highly recommended to watch some of these. But going back to recollections, we're also going to look at uh, we have the books where we get a list of a collection of memoirs. So these are all different memoirs of people who survived through the Holocaust or witnessed the Holocaust um, or had it affect them in some way. And lastly, we have the letters from World War II, which if you click more, you can find uh, more information on this. And these are letters directly related to the Holocaust or Jews in World War II in general. Um, and then there's also stories, which you can get to shtetl stories and family stories, which have links that you can check out now um, with Holocaust stories and stories from other websites that's still yet to come. Um, but you can click through these and find all sorts of different stories that may have some relation to you. Uh, and under articles, you can find the community news, which this is going to take you to that page, the articles from everywhere, which we had looked at before under the uh, news section. From recollections, we're going to talk about calamities. Calamities page talks about just major events that have to deal with Jewish history within the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union. Um, so first, there's a part of talking about pogroms where you can learn more about this um, just by clicking continue and give it just a second. Um, sometimes these pages do take a little while to load, but... Okay, so we can go through and we can see all sorts of information that deal with the pogroms, which lasted from the 1880s until the 1920s, and you can get all sorts of different information, some stuff including documents. So you can see here, not translated documents, but we can get the Chernobyl district and Tarasha and Kiev and Podolia uh, information about victims of the pogroms there. 
Um, so going back to calamities, we also have the evacuation, which is about a lot of Jews leaving the USSR between 1941 and 1942, um, they being evacuees. And this was right at the beginning of the war. And so this goes into all sorts of information relating to that event in history. And you can see down here we have a few family stories that relate directly to this. So going back, uh, we also have the Holocaust and then immigration, which they are starting to get information on to put in here. So there's nothing loaded just yet. And then lastly, we're going to talk about archives. And this is really where the majority of the genealogy related information is going to be, most especially the digitized documents from areas within the Russian Empire or what was the Russian Empire. So scrolling down, we have two different sections, uh, one that deals with UK, US, and Israel, which there's really not as much down here, um, but there's some stuff that may be helpful that you didn't realize. But up here in this area, this is really where you get the genealogy-related info. So uh, if they were in Russia, Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Moldova, Ukraine, uh, just click through these and see what information is there. Some of this stuff, like in Moldova, just links directly to the Jewish Gen page. So just as we said before, the archive section is really a supplement to Jewish Gen. So a lot of stuff you'll find in here will link you directly to Jewish Gen related material. But there are some things in here that may be helpful that you won't find on Jewish Gen directly. And that is especially noted for Ukraine. Now in Ukraine, you have a list of documents which are kept by different Ukrainian archives. And this is pretty much kind of like the Miriam Wiener uh, Rats to Roots website. Um, it gives you the list of what is available. But here, the actual scanned documents, and there's two projects, one which we've discussed at great length in multiple videos, and that's the Alex Krakowski project. And he is not only digitizing records in Ukraine, but he is also suing the archives, which are going against the law, which allows him to digitize these records, and he's winning these cases. And the second project is Victoria Himshit's project, which is an amazing project as well. It's not as noted because she's not as out in the public as Alex is, especially because Alex is fighting these archives. Um, so he's going about it a little differently, but they're both just as amazing. So looking in Alex Krakowski's project, the way that this is set up is Alex actually uploads his sources to a Wikipedia page, which you can actually find linked right here, the source. So if you go there, that'll link you to the page, uh, which is called Jewish Stettles. Uh, there are other pages that Alex uploads to that are non-Jewish. So if you're watching this and you were looking for information on Ukrainian genealogy, but non-Jewish, you can still get a lot of help from Alex Krakowski's project. But the great thing about the Sal Kaplan Foundation page for this is that it lists everything in English, whereas the page that Alex is uploading to is in Ukrainian. And while a lot of people can use Google Translate to translate that page, not everybody knows how to do that or is able to do that. And it doesn't always come out exactly the way that it's supposed to. So some things may not be what you think they are. So what this page does is this page actually lists everything in English and it goes by province, district, place, description, type, year, where the archive is from. And then signature is the link to the actual digitized record in PDF format. And the way to go through these, there's 100 books listed per page, or I should say 99, actually. And there are, I believe, 17 pages. So all you have to do is click next page, which is at the top or the bottom, and then you can go and see the next page. And unfortunately, it doesn't list it as, you know, 1 to 99, and then the next page is 100, 101, 102, etc. It just every page it restarts. So it can get a little easy to get lost in it. So just make sure that you know what page you are on. 
but just keep going through and you may find what you are looking for. The majority of this deals with the Kiev area in Ukraine, but there are a lot of other areas also represented here, including Zatomer, some in Podolia, as well as some in other areas of Ukraine. But you'll find that there is a ton of information in here. And it's just absolutely amazing because this is something that has not been available online forever. So just going to any page, here we have Merchants List in Kiev from 1911. So we're just going to click that, and that brings up the PDF, and we see here that's the book, digitized, very nicely digitized, I might add. It takes a while for it to load, because remember, these books are hundreds of pages. Some of them are almost into the thousands of pages. And this is just an absolutely amazing resource for anyone researching their Jewish ancestry. The biggest problem, though, is that these books are only digitized. So they are not yet translated and they're not indexed. So even if they were indexed, you could at least maybe use Google Translate to try to find stuff. But because they aren't, all you can do is go through the actual book page by page so hopefully some of these pages will load. And as you go page by page, you need to be able to recognize your family name. So if you're going to go through these archives, it's highly recommended that you at least learn the basics of the Cyrillic alphabet so that you can understand how to find names. So now going back, we're going to go back to the archives and look at Victoria's project, which is set up a little bit differently. And with this page, Victoria actually does run it. And you'll see here you can link to Victoria's page on Facebook, give some information about her and the supporters for this page. And then as you scroll down, you'll get all of the different links and information. And one thing that Victoria has for her page is she actually has a comment section. So you'll see a lot of people actually asking her questions questions directly about information and she answers them directly. So you have a direct connection to Victoria if you have any questions. And there's a lot of things that she has on here. As I said, whenever you see these gray boxes, be sure to click them because they're going to give you more information. On her page, the additional sources are often the Jewish Gen type of links. So we have Jewish Gen Community, Kahila Links, Miriam Wiener's website. Then we also have Wikipedia. Um, and we just have all sorts of little different pieces of information from all of these different areas. And you can also find burial lists. And you'll see it's listed fairly straightforward. You get the Cyrillic writing, you get the English writing, you get the years, you get the patronymic, you get the given name, you get a lot of information. So you may not have been able to find this elsewhere. But as you go through the website, I do suggest first going through these tabs at the top as we discussed, and then also going through the site map as we discussed in the beginning, because the way that it's laid out differently in both sections, you may catch things differently. Uh, so there's been some stuff, even as I was making this video that I went through that I didn't even realize was on here. So it's really an amazing website and it's constantly being updated. So even if you don't find anything, it's the type of website that every once in a while you'll want to check up on. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.